Hello and welcome to this review for Bellows Club Whiskey. I bought this bottle, one liter bottle at International Wine, International Market, I'm sorry, in Metairie, Louisiana. Uh, they sell wine, beer, liquor, tobacco, and all sorts of food products. It says straight whiskeys in this product are four or more years old. 20% straight whiskey and 80% grain neutral spirits. So it's pretty dark. Maybe they add caramel color to it. I don't know. Bellows and Company, an honored name since 1830. That is a true story. The Bellows Company of not distillers, but really liquor merchants was established in 1830. And they have a their famous, their old famous insignia was the garland and the fly. There's a like a house fly. I don't know why they use that. But uh, that's what it looks like to me. Anyway, this is from Frankfurt and Claremont, Kentucky. This is back when it was owned by. The Jim Beam Company and it was has since been sold off to Luxco of St. Louis. Luxco making famous products like you've heard of Everclear, for instance. That's one of their famous brands. There are others. This is an old bottle. Uh, it was only uh, like $8.99 for a liter. That's so cheap. I guess uh, International Market acquired it from somewhere and they were trying to un unload the bottles, just like the uh, that other one I bought. Let's see, I'm trying to get a year on it, I think maybe it's from 2010, nope, let me, uh, I think I got it now, I believe this is from 1994, yeah, pretty sure this is January of 1994, alright, um, so, 24 year old bottle, nearly 25 years old, sort of deteriorated. This is the more modern Bellows. Got their new WB, William Bellows, uh, insignia from Luxco. Still an 80-20 blend, but this is just called Bellows American Blended Whiskey, not the Club Whiskey. Is there a big difference? This I do not know. I've never tried them. Similar caramel shade. So a very old company. Uh, you can look at old magazine ads from the 19 pre-prohibition and then since 1930s, 40s, 50s, and it talks about Bellows, New York City uh, liquor merchants, I think. So they, I guess, they were more or less a brand holder, more than a distiller of their own products, and uh, it's making me think of Just Ernie and Brooks, J and B. Just Ernie and Brooks, that's their history. Wine merchants, liquor and spirit, you know, spirits merchants. Getting their products made from other companies and handling them, importing, exporting, and so on. All right, distributing. Okay, so let's try it. Never had it before. Curious. Uh, this is the first video review for this liquor in the world. I can't even find Bellows Club Whiskey on any of the whiskey websites, so these days it's rare. 50 years ago, not so rare. But you know how things will die out over time. Some of the older viewers, maybe in their 60s, 70s, 80s, might remember Bellows. This newer bottle is from St. Louis. I don't know where it's distilled, it just says American. See, that's what they say, American. That means it could be distilled anywhere in America. And there's a background to that. Well, we'll look at that later when I get to this review. 2015. Okay, well, this is not old. I don't know where International Market got this. All right. It's a pale... Caramel color, not really unusual for blended whiskey. American blended whiskey tend to be a little paler. Or you can get the uh, that one from Florida. What was that? The uh, King Square, which is like a straw color. They obviously added no coloring to it. So uh, 
it's straight whiskeys, a blend of straight whiskeys aged at least four years, probably bourbon whiskey, more than likely Jim Beam at the time, and then blended together with grain neutral spirits and bottles. All right, let's go with the aroma. It's very faint. I'm picking up a little of the corn, sugary, whiskey, sweetness, that type of thing you get, the candy corn. Perhaps some wood and char, but it's very faint. And, and honestly, some rye spice. I have to admit that little rye note. Giving it some peppery character. Okay, 25-year-old hmm. bottle nearly, so all right. Let's check out the flavor. Lots of corn. This is not dissimilar to bourbon. And what I mean by that, you get that corn flavor, you get a mild char. Now with bourbon, a true straight bourbon, 100% straight bourbon, you're going to get a heavy char, generally, generally heavy char oak. This is very faint char, faint vanilla. Caramel, caramelized sugar. Um, typical body, but maybe, no, I have to say it's a little lighter body than bourbon. Not by a great extent, a little lighter body. And it's a um, kind of a quick drop off, just kind of <laughs> dissipates. A little lingering undertaste, but not a whole lot. So, uh, is this really outstanding? It has a lot of character and um, charged with immense amounts of flavor. No, it is not. On the other hand, does it have strange undertaste or, or strange off flavors? Like some of these American blended whiskeys, you'll start to pick up honeydew melon. Um, somewhat bizarre flavors. Um, no, nothing like that. Now with Jim Beam, I pick up the green wood. It's like a green wood. It's not like dried old wood. And um, like a cellar mold thing. I'm not picking that up here. So I'm just pick so just imagine a standard bourbon whiskey. Say like benchmark. Or ancient age, like an inexpensive bourbon whiskey. Straight bourbon with whiskey. Or a four-year age. Uh, whatever one you could think of, um, Evan Williams, okay, that's a good one, but that's higher proof. The green label, okay, we'll get into it. Evan Williams green label, 80 proof, charcoal filtered, uh, but very watered down, this is it. Would this appeal to some people? Yes, because some people just cannot stand, it just turns them off that heavy charred oak. And I had somebody tell me that just this past week, oh, I hate that, that flavor. He, he doesn't like it, his purview. Not required to like that. Uh, he said it really doesn't appeal to me. But this might, and you're still getting the 80 proof, which could work in highballs. All right. Uh, a standalone drink, a sipper, contemplative, uh, blended whiskey. Uh, I'm not too sure that's going to work. And anyway, you know it wasn't designed for that. I did see it, however. This year, the same size bottle at a Chinese restaurant in their bar. So apparently, I, I don't think the club, I know the club whiskey is not made anymore because it's not on the Luxco website. They might have a club straight bourbon. But, um, so it's that kind of thing. The Chinese restaurant buys it, inexpensive, they use it for mixed drinks. If you say I want a bourbon and Coke, you're probably going to get that. Uh, <laughs> now if you're watching, you say, I want the Jim Beam with the Coke. Okay, but you're going to pay more. But anyway, that's how that works. So, um, like my friend David would say, it's a bar whiskey. And that's exactly what that is. So, uh, what I recommend it, I would recommend it, especially if you get a liter for $8.99, which is almost like an unheard of price. Um, I have to tell you, I'm not picking up any off or 
it's, it's very pleasant. This might be the best blended whiskey I've ever had, except for Seagram Southern Crown, which I don't think anything I've tried yet in the American blended whiskey category has beaten that, no. But I think this is going to give it a really close, tough run for its money. And I'm liking that vanilla pickup that I'm getting. Interesting vanilla pickup. So, fascinating product. If you see it, and chances are you will not see it, but if you do see it, check it out and let me know what you think. Um, I'm going to start giving scores in 2019, so it's still 2018, not ready to do the scores, but I'm very, very happy that I bought it, and I'm even more curious about the more modern 2015 version. See what happens there. Thanks for watching this video production. And y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana.